Yeah. How about now? I think I had it on mute. Sorry about that. Yep, now I didn't mean to do that. that. Yeah, I just uh, apologize. Yeah, we'll get started in just one more minute. Thanks. I just got a couple people texting me. That's all. They just. Uh, yeah, let's be clear about this. Uh, the system you're about to see works great with TouchWorks. Works great with uh, Allscripts Pro. Works great with Athena Health. Works great with NextGen. The um, paradigm that's used on each EHR is slightly different, all right, but in essence, they're all the same. As a matter of fact, uh, probably 75% or more of this entire demo is just around Call My Doc, which is a consistent across EMRs. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, if there were a group of folks that were using TouchWorks, Allscripts TouchWorks, and, and another folks that are using Allscripts Pro, and other people that are using Athena Health, and they were all on call at the same time, Call My Doc would figure out exactly which EMR they were using and be able to coordinate amongst all of them for on-call schedules, as well as being able to document each phone encounter, put it back on the patient's chart. Now, we work with uh, Allscripts Pro Touch, Allscripts Pro Touchworks, Athena Health, NextGen, and we just got approved for Epic, and we're working on a couple of other ones as well. Um, is anybody getting any echo from me? Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, here's what we're going to do. Um, there's a few, I'll bring up the, the chat thing. I'll try to answer questions as much as I can, but it'll probably be easier to do it at the end. Uh, basically, um, the system you're about to see provides a couple of different uh, capabilities. Let me just bring this up uh, now. Oops. All right, the Call My Doc system is designed to replace all call answering services either during the day or after hours. Uh, it's designed to allow doctors when they're on call to screen their own calls and to be able to look at the patient's chart and a chart summary of the three most recent visits. 
and it will document the entire phone encounter and put it back on the patient's chart. And because it has an app, you can click on one button to call the patient back, and the patient will see the caller ID of your practice calling them, or you can actually have the app call the patient back on its own. For instance, it can do a refill, and it will send it to the pharmacy, it will update the chart, then it will call the patient back and tell them where to pick up the refill, and you don't have to call anybody. Uh, the other aspect of our system is whether it's used after hours or during the day or both, is that when patients call in, we will transcribe their questions into one of 12 different categories because what's happening when the patient's calling your practice is they're not calling for a cheeseburger. They're calling about the same things. I need an appointment. I need a referral. I need a refill, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we're going to do is categorize those questions and transcribe them directly into different types of tasks. And we can actually route those tasks. In other words, we can create those tasks in the appropriate inbox of the person responsible for it. So in other words, if somebody um, handles referrals, all those can go to one inbox. Somebody handles billing questions, all those can go to one inbox. So it makes for a very efficient workflow. It completely replaces anything to do with uh, voicemail and can also uh, replace major components of existing call centers. And we, we just try to address anything that has, has to do with either after hours calling for doctors that are, that are dealing with phone calls when they're not in the office, period, from the app, and also how we can help handle call overflow and make sure that everything's tracked. Um, <clears throat> so what happens is when the patient calls in, I'll show you this in just a minute, we identify who the patient is so that when it gets on your phone, you know exactly who's calling you and why they're calling you. It'll push the patient demographics with their message to your app, and then you could decide if you want to call the patient back or not. And as I mentioned before, during the day, uh, it makes sure that anything that doesn't get answered by a live person doesn't get lost or misplaced. And in addition to that, um, if you have a call center that's taking down messages and this and that, Call My Doc does it by itself. So you don't necessarily need a call center to do anything other than the most efficient thing, which is probably dealing with scheduling patients or other types of critical patient questions. Now I'm gonna show you examples of everything I'm discussing here in just a minute. So the easiest way to explain what we do is to just show you, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do here Let me just put the app back on the screen. I'm give me a break. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a couple of different scenarios of how this works. Uh, I'm going to show you, first of all, how doctors deal with patient calls at the hours when they're on call or during the day or however uh, you want to use the app, all right? Our system is extremely flexible. It's currently in 34 states, we handle 200,000 patient calls a month, and we're in every type of practice you can imagine. There's a zillion customization options behind the scenes here. Um, the other thing I'm gonna show you is, is some examples of how it's used during the day to either answer every single call for certain call types or to be able to back up a live person if someone can't pick, it, pick the phone up or the phone line's busy. Um, the other thing I'm gonna show you as well is uh, how you could page any doctor, but it's far beyond anything that has to do with paging. It documents the entire scenario of workflow, which I'll show you in just a minute. We have time, I may show you some other features as well, but, but uh, those are the major components, uh, even though we do have a lot of additional features. So what I'm gonna do is, is there's a 844-612 number that's just to the left of my iPhone. I'm gonna call that number directly to pretend I'm a patient. And when, you, when I call into that system, everything you're about to hear, 95% of everything you're about to hear, except for the part where we need to know what's the patient's date of birth, can be completely customized for your practice. The way our system works is that you can have one phone number or many phone numbers, 
every phone number can have a different set of uh, prompts, a different set of um, workflow, and a different set of functions associated with it, and a different set of on-call schedules if that's the way it's being used. Again, I'm going to show you examples. So keep in mind when I call in, even the voices you're about to hear and the languages you're about to hear, we support 15 different languages, can be changed and customized for your practice. Press one for English. Pressionnez deux pour l'espagnol. Appuyez sur trois pour le français. Drucken-Sie vier für Deutsch. Très meeting. Please select an office. Press one for prime clinical test office. Press two for Athena health test office. Press three for all scripts pro test office. Press four for all scripts touch works pro office. Welcome to all scripts touch works demo office. The office is currently closed. If this is a medical emergency, please call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. If you are an existing patient or calling on behalf of an existing patient, please press 2 immediately to be called as quickly. Please enter the patient's date of birth by using your keypad to enter two digits for the month, two digits for the day, and four digits for the year of the patient's date of birth. You have entered. September 18, 1963. If this is the correct date of birth, press 1. If not, press 2. Please wait while we look up the medical chart for the patient. If you have an emergency and need to speak with the doctor on call, press 1. If you have a question about your bill or labs, or some other non-urgent issue you would like to share with our office, press 2. I'll explain that more in a second. Let me press one to reach the doctor on call, and then we'll discuss it. Would you like us to return your call to 310-561-8055? If yes, press one. If no, please speak the patient's full name slowly and clearly. When done, press any key. Then you will be asked for more information. Cross over. Now, please leave a detailed message. Please speak slowly and clearly. When done, press any key. So what this is going to do now is everything I'm saying is going to get automatically transcribed into a task that goes into TouchWorks. At the same time, it's automatically going to transcribe everything I'm saying and push my patient chart information to the iPhone app. Once the doctor or office has listened to your message, we will contact you at 310-561-8055. You will be receiving a call back from... You have a patient call. You have a patient call. Okay. So first part, you get your call my doc number. You may get multiple call my doc numbers, depending on how you're set up. Um, and patients call in, they identify themselves using their date of birth. And if there's more than one patient with the same date of birth, we'll prompt for the first few letters of the patient's last name. Uh, we do other things behind the scenes to uh, expedite the patient getting uh, through the system. But at the end of the day, it's 2020. It's not 1987. Uh, if patients have a phone and they remember when they were born or have their date of birth with them, they can get into the system. But if they don't have either one of those things, they probably should go to the ER anyways. But my point is that um, anybody can use the system. There's no training involved whatsoever. I can guarantee you 100%, if you plug this in today, patients will just start using it. There's, there's no patient training. The system, as I mentioned before, is deployed in 31st states uh, all over um, West Virginia, Florida, Texas, uh, Mississippi, Alaska, Hawaii, California, Massachusetts, I mean, you name it. So people just start using it. Now, once we figured out who the patient is, there's two things they can do. Uh, first thing is reach the doctor. Now, if this was set to day mode, it would say press one to leave an urgent message for your doctor. And then we would look up either who their usual provider is on their chart, or we would look up the last provider they saw, and we'd automatically create a uh, 
transcribe it, their question, and create a task that would go to the appropriate provider or a member of the appropriate provider staff if that's the best way to do it and that's the way you want it set up. Again, the second uh, press to exists is because that way you can program what question types you want that phone number to be able to take care of and transcribe directly into tasks. So if I press two, it could say press one if you have a billing question, press two if you need a refill, press three if you need to make an appointment, et cetera, et cetera. And all those things that get transcribed into tasks, they're also going to show up on your Call My Docs, uh, Call My Doc uh, dashboard, which I'll show you in a second as well. Now, what it has to do with uh, when the doctor is not in the office or after hours, uh, that is done through the app. And I just happen to have an iPhone here. Uh, we support Android and iPhone equally as well. If you put an Android and an iPhone side by side, when you open our app on either one, it would look identical to what you're seeing right now. So I've got mine set because all of the notifications are programmable according to my preferences. So it wakes up and says, you have a patient call. Um, I also have it set to text me, and I can also have it set to call me within 15 minutes to remind me to open the app. But there's an extensive level of notification customizations in the system. Now, this is the idle timeout screen. So someone can't just pick my phone up and start looking at patient calls. I need to re-enter my PIN code. Then when I click on enter, that photo and the name is being pulled in real time out of the patient's chart. Uh, it's not making copies. It's merging the data on the fly with the patient call information. So when I get the patient call, I know who's calling me with their demographics at the top. I know why they're calling me with the transcription at the bottom. And if the transcription is a little strange because a patient may be standing next to a cement mixer or calling them <clears throat> while they're uh, blow drying their hair, you can always play it. Carl, so what this is going to do now. So this is very different than other type of call services in that I know immediately who's calling me and why they're calling me at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I can think about what I want to do with this patient. Now then, what you do is you swipe the screen from right to left like you're rotating a cube because now I've got the patient chart summary of the three most recent visits, problem and diagnostic codes, three most recent lab results, medications, etc. So who's this patient? Why do they want to talk to me at all? What's happening with this patient lately? And I swipe the screen again, hit a button called take session because take session is uh, tells call my doc I'm about to work with this patient and then when I hit close session, eventually everything I just did with this patient winds up documented on their chart. So if I want to call the patient, I hit this phone icon, and then I hit this green bar. And the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to call me first. Please be patient, connecting you with the patient or caller. And I'm going to hear music on hold. And now it's going to open up another phone line and call the patient on a different phone line with the caller ID of my practice. This is all Scripts Catchworks demo office calling you back. The doctor would like to speak with you now. Now. And we're connected. We're connected. Echo is just because both phones are in the same room. I'm just waiting for the screen to catch up to where I'm up. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. But here's the thing. Uh, everybody knows that not all calls require me to call the patient back right away. Or maybe I don't have to call them back at all. It depends on the situation. So if I click on add response, these are all the things the app can do on its own and call the patient or, or take care of whatever I'm about to do and document it all, and I don't have to call anybody back. So I'm going to click on prescribe here, pulling the patient's meds off their chart. Uh, I could actually search for and prescribe a different med, but I'll just pick one off here. And I don't know why that's coming in like that. Again, this is a test system, so it's a little strange. Sorry about that. It's very weird. It doesn't come through like that. I don't know why that data is coming out like that. We'll have to do something. Oops. 
Also, I can put notes for the pharmacist down here. And also, uh, I could click on edit and search for and send it to any pharmacy in the country. So I'm going to save that response. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to send some instructions back to the patient. I sent in your refill, but we haven't seen you in over six months. So please schedule time to come in for a medication review. And then down here, I'm going to put a note for my future reference or to the staff or both because this note is going to go into the task and it's also going to go into the dashboard for call my doc so the staff knows what to do when they come in i send in this patient's refill but we haven't seen them in a really long time so could you please schedule them to come in for a medication review when you get in on monday and i just hit closed session because i'm done and ask them to do everything i just told it to do Hello, this is the office of Allscripts TouchWorks Demo Office returning your call. A patient at this phone number contacted us with a medical issue. We are calling back now with the doctor's answer. If you are the patient or a HIPAA authorized individual, press 1. Allscripts TouchWorks Demo Office has the following information for you. You can repeat this information at any time by pressing 1. Please listen to the entire message. This message has two parts. Part one, the doctor has prescribed the following medicine. Aspirin 81 mg oral tablet chewable. Daily, the prescription has been sent to the pharmacy. CVS 16,050 in Target. Located at 3433 Sepulveda Boulevard. Please call the pharmacy to confirm it is ready at 310-370-1021. Part two. I sent in a refill, but we haven't seen you in over six months, so please schedule a time to come in for a medication review. Press 1 to repeat this information. Press 2 to confirm you have Do you wish to start a new session with the doctor for another issue? Press 1 for yes. Press 2 for no. Thank you for calling Allscripts Touchworks Demo Office. Goodbye. So, um... You have your call my doc number. Uh, patients call that number when you forge your. Uh, hang on a second. I got a few different questions. Um. Oops. So as I mentioned before, this works with all scripts pro and touch works. Um, anyways, you forward your calls to it like you would any other answering service or any call center. Uh, patients call in and identify themselves with the date of birth. So uh, we know it's, uh, which patient this goes with when they call, uh, the doctor gets the patient information so they could screen their calls. Uh, they could decide if they want to app to call the patient back or they want to call the patient back, any combination you just saw. And when they're finished, uh, it's going to, it creates a task, and the task is to remind the staff what they need to do when they come in the next day. So, um, <clears throat> hang on a second, sorry. What we see here is the, admin, uh, the uh, Call My Doc admin panel the dashboard. Now, um, at the same time, this created tasks, okay? So we can, we're gonna look at those in a second, but I'm gonna start here because we could put way more information on our dashboard than we could put in a task. So let's just say that I come in on Monday Now it's got my name on it. And not only that, it just updated that task to put my name on it. So we coordinate between tasks and the dashboard so people aren't duplicating effort. Plus the other thing is if you happen to log in to your dashboard and have a look at this, you're gonna see that uh, somebody's working on it, okay? And I can click on request and I could read what the patient said and play it. 
But 95% of the time, what you're going to read is going to be the right transcription. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen the TV ads for Google uh, Assistant. We use the exact same technology in our system. As a matter of fact, we have a direct relationship with the Google uh, speech to text folks on different types of questions and issues because as far as I could tell, we're one of the largest healthcare um, services that are using the speech to text function of Google. In any event, uh, if I click on response, I can look at uh, what the doctor did from the app. And then the session log is a detailed log of everything that occurred from the beginning to the end. So what, what phone number did the patient call in from? What date of birth did they put in? Did they confirm they're the hip authorized individual? They left the message. It updated the patient uh, task, excuse me, the task with that message. It also uh, sent notifications to the doctor. And then the doctor uh, claimed the call at five minutes later, 1019. Did a conference call, sent some uh, information back to the patient, patient heard the message, et cetera. So great. So if we go look over here, hopefully this will work. Come on. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what's happening here. Let me reconnect to my test server. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I'm just refreshing it. Hang on. Okie dokie. So first time a patient calls in, it's going to put this transcription in here because it just it could have just stayed here. In other words, you decide what call types and what what information uh, the doctor gets passed to their app and which ones don't. This could have been a billing question. Could have been some other type of question. Um, again, don't forget, this is customizable. So this is just an example of how it works. But in any event, uh, the transcription was worked on by the, the doctor because you could see that uh, there's a session note in here. And you can also see at the very top anyways that it says, Carl Silva, I'm calling this patient back. So if I was working this task, and just work the task like you normally do. I don't have to actually touch the um, the call my doc dashboard. I could work the whole thing from this this uh, angle, but if I click on OK, and I click on done. takes it out of my inbox. Now, what that means is that within five minutes or so, it's automatically going to archive it from here. The way this works is that if I archive this call, this call from here, or if I close the task associated to it, within five minutes, it will uh, automatically archive. Or if I, if I uh, archive it from here, it will close that task out. Uh, what happens is we keep this information forever. So if it's archived or the task is closed, either way, that means that we're finished with this call. So now it's going to put everything back on the patient's chart. And what we do is we don't push the voicemails or all the other stuff back to the chart. We keep it forever. So if I go in and I look at what occurred, if I click on it. Carl Silva, text.
it will play back the patient information that was recorded. Carl Sola, this is a test that touch works to see. So you've always got it forever back on the patient's chart. Now, so what you wind up with is you wind up with a way to track everything that's happening. So this is a location we have in Alabama with 178 providers. And uh, they have all their locations. You can put the dashboards together in different ways. So all the lo locations are listed here. As I mentioned before, we're going to categorize patient questions with a date of birth into different categories. So, for instance, in this situation, um, there's no box on here that says refill. There's no box on here that says medical records because there isn't a question of that nature in the system. So these boxes come and go as needed according to the call types that are in the system. So if it was my job to deal with billing questions, I just click on this box and I take care of the questions. Um, we're also going to categorize other types of call sessions into pharmacy calls, doctor, hospital calls, uh, or other types of calls. In other words, other types of calls could be uh, a new patient. I'm getting a few questions here. Give me a second. Hang on. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up with these questions in just a minute. Okay. Um, I have answers. We we we've been again we've been doing this for six years. We do two hundred thousand patient calls a month, in other words, two point four million calls a year. So if it wasn't HIPAA compliant or if it didn't handle other types of scenarios, we wouldn't be in business anymore. And so we're, we're going to go through some of those things in detail. Um, but this is just an example of, you know, what we can track. So the point of this is that if you get a stat lab result at 4.50 on a Friday evening, it's going to be on your dashboard. It's not going to sit there till Monday morning, okay? And if one of your uh, employees is not – keeping up with things, you you don't know if there's 30 voicemails that need to be responded to until they quit, or who knows what. Well, they're always going to be here. The patient calls you up and says, I called you four times on Tuesday, and the line person didn't pick up, and it's not on this dashboard. They didn't call you. So this, this system serves a lot of purposes to be able to manage tons of issues that currently exist in most practices in most locations, period. Um, one of those issues being that doctors hate their after hours calling services, period. And one of those issues being that uh, nothing's written down after hours. Uh, one of those issues being that um, the patients call in and the doctor can't screen their calls properly. Well, this system tracks every single thing that's happening, period. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned before, is that you can have different phone numbers for different functions, okay? So, uh, Cahaba Medical Care has an after-hours line for UABMW Hospital, after-hours lines for BMC, after-hours lines for UABMW here for their OB department, and for Baptist Princeton. And what happens is, in our system, We manage the entire call schedule. So uh, this is an example of a hotline for practice um, that looks like it's actually got somebody online. In other words, using the app 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Again, you can program these dashboards to do just about anything you could imagine. Uh, let me show you another scenario here that happens fairly frequently and this is the case where um, 
you don't know where the, a particular doctor is, but you have an emergency. Okay, so let's say the doctor has the app. You don't know where they are. Could be during the day or after hours, who knows what. But you have to read some, period. Or maybe they're seeing patients. So you want to know that there's something going on, but they don't necessarily have to get the door knocked on and interrupted. If I click on this plus sign, I can push any call type I need to to a doctor. So uh, let's say that there's a patient that has a problem. Click on this, hit search, hit the plus sign, and that pulls their default pharmacy, excuse me, the default uh, number off their chart. But let's say I want to tell them to go call a different number. And I put the message here. Oops. And then I want to pick which doctor I send this to. There'd be a list there for this department. And I hit save. And I wait about two seconds. Maybe three. You got the patient call. call. And so now I'm the doctor with the app. And maybe I can't handle it right now, or I need to, you know, at least have a look at it, multitasking while I'm talking to some other patient. Just like you would a text message or something else. But when I open it, there's the patient. A patient call so I click on it the difference is this didn't come from the patient it came from my office Carl Silva this patient just admitted to Torrance Memorial please call and ask for room 710 swipe the screen there's the chart swipe the screen hit take session okay let's say that I hit this button and I call Torrance Memorial and that, and that might be a fake phone number well, let's just assume that it's called Torrance Memorial. So I speak to Torrance Memorial and the admitting doctor. And when I'm done, I'm going to leave a note for my office. I called Torrance Memorial and I spoke to the admitting doctor for the patient, Carl Silva, in room 710. We need to have them come in for some blood work and an abdominal ultrasound. ASAP, could you please make these arrangements as soon as possible? I hit close session. Now this is me back in the office refreshing my screen. Oh, there's the note from the doctor. Okay, cool. So put a note on here to make sure that everybody knows I'm working on it. And then I do whatever I'm going to do. And then I click on archive the patient chart. Patient, oops. Scheduled. And then I click on confirm. There's one other thing I want to show you guys. And then we can open this up to questions. And I'll also start to go through all of the Q&A questions that we haven't touched on yet. And if I have to go back to a different part, we'll do that. Okay, let's say that <clears throat> not the app is slow at my screen. So, so, so let's say that uh, I need to send a message to a patient, but I'm in the middle of something else, like having dinner with my wife. Well, who knows what? I just remembered I need to do this. Well. I look up the patient's chart, click on the patient session. Now, there's no message here because this is not uh, the patient calling me. This is me outbound calling the patient. So when I swipe the screen like this, I hit take session, and then I hit add response. Your lab results are completely fine. There's nothing to worry about. We will call you and schedule for a follow-up appointment 
in the next four weeks, but your lab results are completely fine. Please schedule this patient in about four weeks for a follow-up. Closed session. This is the office of Allscripts TouchWorks Demo Office. The doctor has the following message for you. If you are the patient or a HIPAA op visual, Allscripts TouchWorks Demo Office has the following information for you. You can repeat this information at any time by pressing 1. Please listen to the entire message. This message has one part. Part 1. Your lab results are completely fine. There's nothing to worry about. We will call you and schedule for a follow-up appointment in the next four weeks, but your lab results are completely fine. Press 1 to repeat this information. Press 2. You have... Do you wish to start a new session? for another issue? Press 1 for yes or no. Thank you for calling Allscripts TouchWorks Demo Office. Goodbye. Somebody just asked me a question about the languages.
Do you guys hear me now? Sorry about that. I greatly apologize. Did you get the part where it called the patient back in Spanish, even though I wrote the response in English? Oh, no, you kidding me. Unbelievable. Oh, what a pain. All right. One more time, just two seconds, okay? I'll go very quickly. Here's the thing with our system, okay? You don't have to listen to the whole nine yards. So what happens is when patients start calling in, they get very used to it extremely quickly. So what will happen is I'm going to make an adjustment to this voice too. Bienvenido a un script demo. So it's a little easy to understand what kind of Spanish it's using. I'll get to the questions here quickly. I'm sorry. This one for English. Presione dos paredes. Por favor, seleccione una oficina. Presione. Bienvenido a Olescript.org. So, so I'm just blowing through these menus because I already know what to touch. Works the same way with anybody. Every time I ask you a question, you can type Important. 
Uh, we charge no one-time cost or fees. There's no setup charge. There's no customization fee. There's nothing uh, up front, number one. Number two, you get a minimum 30-day free trial with our system, during which time we could fine-tune it and modify it and change it to integrate correctly uh, with your workflows because there's a zillion customization methods. Best way to work with us and our system is you tell us the situation and what you need to work with and how you need to fix it, and we'll back into a solution that works for you. Uh, the other thing is we come out with new features about every two weeks or so. So um, even though I've been doing this 36, excuse me, six years in 34 different states, almost every day someone comes up with a cool idea. So we're constantly implementing what people are asking us to do and making it better for everybody in general. Um, this is applicable to any size practice from one solo provider as you saw, all the way up to a couple of hundred. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's going to boil down to dealing with different departments. And for instance, if we did a 30-day free trial for a larger organization, it may not work out like that. In other words, we may do a free trial with a gastroenterology department, then we'll start with cardiology, and then we'll do uh, primary care, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these things take time. And the other reason why um, we don't charge any additional fees is because we deal with so many different situations and so many different practices. It's just easier for everybody. Now, if you want to keep it, it's $109 for the first provider and ninety-nine, excuse me, $39 per additional provider, and that's a month-to-month -month situation. There's no contract. There's no additional fees involved. You can cancel at any time. You can have a contract if you want, but frankly, most people don't even bother because if you're happy and we're happy, there's no issue. Now, when I said 109 for the first provider and 39 for additional provider, um, in a situation where it's only used after hours, those are just the doctors that are on call. If it's used during the day or 24 hours a day, since the call to volume is five times higher than it would be at night, that is the providers per location. But there's, we can put a finer point on it. In other words, if you have two providers that are both half time, that only counts as one provider. So there's various things we can do to work through different types of pricing situations. Um, somebody asked me another question here. Yeah, you can, uh, we're gonna have the demo posted on our website and we're also going to send it to uh, um, Megan and all scripts to make sure you guys all get it. Uh, I want to look through here. Um, we're right now getting ready to go into beta with uh, with NextGen. Um, yes, as, and, and we work with all scripts hosted. Uh, we also work with all scripts uh, on site. Um, in terms of the pro each AHR environment, unfortunately. I can't show you that right now, but I could show it to you anytime you want. If you could just uh, shoot us an email. Um, works exactly the same on the Pro e EHR. Um, when it comes to Spanish to English and English to Spanish, it's not just English to Spanish to Spanish to English. It's any of the 15 languages that we have, plus the fact that uh, You can pick a lot of dialects. So this is Amazon Alexa and, and Google Assistant. Okay, same thing with this one. There's a zillion for English, and there's a bunch for some other languages. Now, um, Chinese is not, it, 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 it's a little bit more difficult. Um, here's what I mentioned before. So you could map these calls to go to specific uh, teams or specific uh, people. And what else? I think that's about it for me. Let me let me go to the Q and A part here really quickly so that you guys. Uh, um, what else?
Yeah, sorry about the couple of freezes there. I apologize for that. Um, yes, we are definitely HIPAA compliant. Um, we have various um, scenarios that we can go through to demonstrate how we work with HIPAA compliance. But the answer to the question is, uh, if one of your staff calls up somebody's office, excuse me, if one of your staff calls up somebody's house and says, I have the lab results for so-and-so, how many times does your staff say to them, are you the HIPAA compliant person? And even if they said they're the HIPAA person and they signed on the HIPAA forms, if people lie, they're going to do whatever they want. And it's the same thing after hours. Uh, this system, for instance, is way different. Um, if you need to contact a one-on-one -on -one demo, please call us or um, go to our website to schedule that. But we're actually more compliant than probably what your staff does right now if you were to listen to them. So um, I'm not really sure what else to say about that other than in six years, 200,000 calls a month seems to be going pretty good. <laughs> Um, we're also going to be continually adding more features. So one of the things we want to be able to do is allow patients to do more in terms of self-scheduling or, or getting the scheduling information over the phone. Because it turns out that 40% of all calls to any front desk in the country have something to do with a schedule. Now, in the short term, what we could do is some really creative things. And I'm almost done here. So if you guys could just give me another minute to show you something, you're going to love this. Okay, here's Forest Lane Pediatrics in Texas right? Split between Plano and Dallas. Now, they have several after-hours phone numbers. They have these two other things they use 24 hours a day, okay? They have a billing hotline and a medical records hotline. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that if you call Dallas or you call Plano and um, you say press one for this, two for that, it'll say press three if you have a billing question or press four if you have a medical records question. We handle every single call because that's not considered a life-threatening emergency. It's not considered something where it has to be done in the next 10 seconds. It's something that can be done when it gets done. So if people call in with billing questions in Spanish or English, we're going to transcribe those into different tasks, and they're also going to be on here on the dashboard. And those tasks and questions are going to be routed to the appropriate person. So why would you have a live person? I mean, most of the time the front desk person can just say, I'll take down your information and have the billing person get back to you. And the same thing for medical records. Well, why, why even bother? I mean, that's a waste of front desk activity. Just have us take care of the whole thing for you. Uh, another really cool example down here is a Lancaster Health. They have what they call the prescriptions hotline because they were having issues with people complaining about refills and different medication questions. So they have the prescriptions hotline, which is that 844 number up at the top there, 844-211. And they publish that number and give it out to patients. And in addition to that, it's built into their uh, uh, call tree in their 12 different locations. So if I press four, I'm going to get the prescriptions hotline. If I call that number directly, I'm going to get the prescriptions hotline. But the point is this. It only answers three questions. I need a refill. I have a medication question. I need a new prescription. That's all this does. But it tracks every single one of them, so they're not going to get lost or dropped or, or, you know, period. It's always going to get handled one way or another. And you can see how different things are getting handled. So the Water Street nurse line, uh, it, over the last 30 days, had 195 calls. Uh, it peaks out at about 11 calls on average per 30 days. I will um, answer everybody's questions as quickly as I can. Uh, the medication... Now, the med medication will get updated the next, next time you go in and do a refresh or go back into that patient's chart. I'll have to show you that one-on-one um, -on -one if, if you have a moment. I'm going to go back into the Q&A questions to see if there's anybody else in here. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, the best thing to do is uh, you can uh, contact your Allscripts account manager. Um, you can contact Megan or you can go to our website. 
Um, most importantly, if you want to see additional videos and information, please go to the Allscripts uh, marketplace to get any additional information and downloads about what our system does. Um, but I'd like to thank everybody for attending this. Um, apologize for a couple of little technical difficulties here and there. And uh, we will put this together for you guys, including the, the charts and the presentation and make it available to everybody who attended this. Um, thank you and have a great day.